I'm really glad that so many people have been enjoying the Dinosaur Demon episodes that I've put out on the channel in the last month. But at the same time, while we're on a bit of a dinosaur kick, I did also want to get back to doing a classic goofy dinosaur episode on here. Narrated, of course, by everyone's favorite grouchy, disgruntled ex-dinosaur geneticist, Dr. Champagne McGregor. And I've been noticing more requests lately to do something with both Amphibia and Owl House, so I figured, since there's also a Baymax show coming out at the end of the month, why not do a whole episode focused around Disney TV characters? Hence, the topic for today's video. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's go! Hit like, if you want. Subscribe, if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. You know, when I got me arm bit off by a bleating Duckasaurus back when I worked at the Absolute Clown Factory Dino Cross Park, I thought that would always be the most ridiculous thing that ever happened to me. Now, I get that same arm shot off by a bleating gopher with a ray gun. Am I just an insanity magnet or something? Hey, it could have been worse, the gopher could have shot off your other arm. Besides, this just gives good old Benny Shab an excuse to give you an upgraded mecha arm. I'm sorry, but could we step back a moment to what Champagne said about a duck -asaurus? What is this, and why did it bite off your appendage? Hey, good call, Vasilia. While we're sitting here, you could finally tell us about some of the dinosaurs you made for that park. Oh, I guess. The blatant Dachosaurus was what I called the first of a few dinosaurs I made when we had a temporary collaboration with Disney. And by the way, if I'm the one telling stories today, I don't want none of your weird multiverse tangent interruptions about how stuff from my dimension, like Disney, is some weird monster or mech armor or some other weird thing from either of your dimensions, got it? Yeah, alright, I'll save my story about making Walt Disney's frozen head a mech armor for another time. And I will withhold the legends of the fabled Disney Corset Kingdom from my world. Real bad start, but whatever, I'm just gonna get into it. See, Disney came to us saying they had some new shows that they wanted to promote in collaboration with our park. So they says to our higher ups, why don't you make some dinosaurs based on our characters? One of the first ones they asked for was Scrooge McDuck, cause they were rebooting DuckTales or something. I thought, alright, it's a duck, I'll make it a terrorist, a terrorist something, a flying dinosaur or whatever. Not to interrupt, but I don't think pterosaurs are technically dinosaurs, they're just like uh, flying lizards or something. Yeah, whatever, you know I don't actually care about dinosaurs, Plus, these are the same people who made me make a blatant saber-toothed tiger thinking that was a dinosaur. Even I know that ain't one of them. But it didn't matter since my horror up said, Nah, Champagne, we don't think it should be a pterosaur or whatever. We think McDuck should be a T-Rex. But like a feathery one, then maybe give it a beak too. A T-Rex with a beak. Fine, I said. I spliced in T-Rex genes and genes from one of them duck build dinosaurs and even some from an actual duck, for good measure. The thing turned out to be a horrendous homunculi that I thought I should just smother in its sleep to put it out of its misery. But the horror up said they thought it was fine. And on top of that, one of them asked me, Hey Champagne, did you breed it to love gold like in the show? I didn't know how to explain to a grown man that an obsession with gold ain't something you find in someone's genes, let alone the genes of a blatant dinosaur that doesn't have a flipping clue what gold is. That's a good point, but you could train it to love gold, right? Oh, that is exactly what he said. So we did. One of the horror ups brought in a bunch of gold that apparently he just had lying around the ridiculously overpaid mug and eventually a trainer got the thing to build gold into its nest. Where they also put three fake eggs to represent the character's nephews from the show. Ah, I think I may know where this is going. You tried to steal gold from dinosaur, did you not? <laughs> Four pieces, that's all I was gonna take. 
They didn't count it before putting it in the thing's cage, so they wouldn't know I took it, and it's not like the bleeding dinosaur needed it, it's a dinosaur. But I guess they trained that thing real well to hoard its gold no matter what. Hence the tale of how I got me arm bit off by a blatant Duckasaurus. You know, I always thought you had a way more morally sound history than myself, but uh, now I hear you used to steal from poor defenseless animals? Maybe we are meant to be together, huh? Defenseless? The thing was a bleeding monster T-Rex freak. I was glad to see the thing die three years later. Died young, huh? Well, like my cousin Becky likes to say, die in your youth if you can't bring the juice. Uh, she's got a bit of a lisp, by the way. Anyway, how'd Disney feel about this thing dying? You have to start over? Nah, they script the project a few years later anyway. They just love cancelling things before their time. I'd made a whole bunch of dinosaurs that we just had to pretend weren't Disney related after that. That duck one wasn't even the only weird crossbreed one I'd made for them. One was for this show Amphibia, about a girl who gets lost in this weird frog world place. They wanted a dinosaur version of the main frog character, Sprig. So I look up frog dinosaurs, see what genes we've got, and there's this thing called the Beasel Bullfrog or something, I don't know. But anyway, I says to the horror ups, yeah, I can make Sprig into this thing. But the horror up says, mm, I don't know, Champagne, it's a little bit boring looking, don't you think? Just looks like a big frog. And I says, whatever, they're all boring to me, just tell me what you want me to do already and I'll do it. Why did you stay at this job for so many years? You sound very passionate about how much you despise it there. Yeah, look, I ain't always made good decisions for me mental health, alright? I'm getting better at it now. Yeah, like spending more time with a couple of class acts like me and Silly here. Hmm. You make a real bad point. Anyway, for this dinosaur, honestly, I don't even know what I spliced in there, besides the Beasel Froggo thing. It stood on its hind legs, had real amphibian sorta of mucky kinda of skin, and big weird frog eyes. Thing looked alright, I guess, a lot less monstrous than the bleeding Duckasaurus, but the real kicker came when the thing was big enough to be let into its containment. I came in one day soon after to find a casting director and a bunch of young girls in me lab. I asked what was going on, and one of the horror ups says, Oh, we're casting a live version for the role of Anne from the show, so we can put her in the cage to play around with the dinosaur to entertain people. In this dinosaur, was it the plant-eating kind? Was an omnivore, so ate some plants, but I wouldn't put it past the thing to try eating a little girl. And when I says that to the bleeding higher up that we'd be risking this kid getting eaten any time she was in the cage, the bleeding higher up still took a few bleeding minutes to think about if she wanted to do it. Well, that's pretty wacky and irresponsible and all, but uh, going back for a sec, why was they doing the casting in your lab? This place was probably pretty big, wasn't it? Because they had no blatant respect for me whatsoever. But at the same time, no matter how much I flipped out at any of them, they never fired me neither. Well, they must have had some respect for you then, or perhaps you were just irreplaceable to them due to your incredible skill set. I don't imagine making dinosaurs is easy thing to do. Yeah, thanks. I've actually checked in a few times since I left and they haven't been able to replace me. Oh, but wait, I, I actually did get in trouble one time and it was on this project, but it was for a completely ridiculous reason. You're gonna love this one. While making one of these dinosaurs for Disney, despite the fact that, you know, I'm gay myself, I got in trouble for being insensitive to gay people. Wait, what? Did they know that you was gay at the time? I mean, they shoulda, I'd worked there for years and I don't hide it or nothing. 
I mean, to be fair, I hated everyone I worked with, so I didn't really chat with them much about my personal life, but still. Uh, no offense, Champagne, but it's not completely surprising for someone to accuse you of being insensitive. You can be a little bit uh, direct with people. You snap easier than a dry twig, Champ. What? Whatever, that's not the point. Point is, I was working on the dinosaur version of one of the characters from the show The Owl House. They wanted the character King is a fluffy raptor kind of thing. I'd actually already started watching that show, so I was kind of happy to be working with one of the characters. And since the higher ups had a multi million dollar deal with Disney to make dinosaurs from their characters, I assumed the higher ups might have at least done a little research about the characters themselves, if not, you know, actually watched the shows already. I thought they'd know a thing or two about the Owl House and its characters and the community and the lingo around it. So one day, one of them asks me which dinosaur I was working on that day and I says the one from the Gay Witch Show. Assuming she'd know that the show literally revolves around a couple of queer witches. I guess she assumed I was insulting the show instead of you know, just literally describing it the same way a bunch of other fans do. Cause later that day, I got an email from HR saying that I had to come in for sensitivity training for the kind of language I use. Well, that is kind of funny, but to be fair, it also just sounds like a bit of a misunderstanding where she might have actually been trying to do the right thing. If she didn't know you was gay and didn't know that the show was gay, then, you know, it's not a totally unreasonable thing for her to do. What's not? Don't go around defend it. Alright, you kinda make a decent point there, but don't make a habit of defending that place. This is the same lady who is gonna throw a kid into a dinosaur containment to possibly get eaten for people's entertainment. Alright, fair enough. Probably one of those situations, you know, a busted clock is still right three times a day. Twice a day. A broken clock is right twice a day. Not in my dimension. In my dimension, a broken clock is right three times a day. I'm gonna come to your dimension just to find the busted clock and show you that that ain't true. Hey, come on over. Sounds like fun. I'll make us dinner, show you around, find your clock to bust. We can make it a whole thing. I'm getting back to the dinosaurs. I made the Owl House one this cute small raptor like I was supposed to and bred it to have an exoskeletal skull. They also put a collar on the thing like the one the character has in the show and it did actually make the thing look cuter to be honest. But I did have to make sure they weren't trying to cast no kid to put in this thing's cage cause it was explicitly a carnivore. And were they trying to do this? Luckily, no. Nah. But, they did put a bunch of owls in the thing's containment, and it just started eating them. Eventually, that was all it wanted to eat. And Disney wasn't too happy about having an owl munching raptor. So, did they ever get you to make any herbivores? Doesn't sound like this park was gonna have a lot of variety. Ugh. They did, but not that often. They figured kids only wanted to see scary dinosaurs, so the ratio of herbivores to carnivores was always pretty out of whack. I did make a herbivore dinosaur out of this character, Baymax, because he had a spin-off show in early production. They tried to convince me to make the thing a really fat white T-Rex, and I said absolutely not. The whole point of the character is that he helps people. I don't know how we work that into a dinosaur, but we at least can't make the thing hurt another dinosaurs. You sure seem to know a lot about these shows and movies and stuff. If your Disney is at all similar to the one in my dimension, I've been assuming that these are all cartoons and kid focused and stuff, right? I ain't judging or nothing, but doesn't seem like the kind of thing that you'd watch. Why not? They're wholesome and adorable and made for all ages. What do you want? I got hot, don't I? Anyway, we came to a compromise surprisingly, where I'd make the dino of Baymax a dinosaur that could look like the version of the character with his armoured suit on that he wears when he needs to fight people occasionally. That way, it would be cute and an herbivore, but also look like it could do some serious damage. 
Based on how these stories have gone, I am assuming they took advantage of the creature's ability to do serious damage? Yup. How do you think the blatant Dacosaurus died? They had a trial run audience come in and they put this thing in the same containment as the Dacosaurus and it had to defend itself. The thing avoided fighting as long as it could, but eventually took a nice big swing with its tail and cracked the Dacosaurus' head. Killed it pretty much instantly. Jeez, that's pretty dark. How'd the herbivore react to that? Was it traumatized or something? Nope. It actually got a taste for fighting, started smashing down trees in its own containment and its eyes got all red and bloodshot. Always seemed like it was just looking for another fight. Tried everything to calm it down and nothing worked. That was around the time Disney cancelled the collaboration. Too many things were going wrong for them. Well that's actually good timing story wise cause I'm just about done with your new Mac arm. Try it out. Huh. This actually does feel pretty good. And, uh, did you work in, you know, the panini maker? Of course I did. Well then, I'd say it's lunchtime. One of the higher-ups brought in a bunch of gold that apparently he just had <laughs> lying around. One of the horror-ups brought in a bunch of gold that apparently... <laughs> I'm getting better at it now. Better at it. Wow, it's <laughs> just cutting all the T's out of there. Better at... Get in better at it. Jeez. Well, as creepy as that Duckasaurus turned out, overall, I'd say this was a pretty good video. If you want more goofy dinosaur episodes, I've got a whole playlist of them narrated by Champagne McGregor. Or, as mentioned, there's also the Demon Dinosaur episodes, if you want something a little bit creepier. And I'd love to know what else people would like me to work with in terms of Disney characters, whether TV or not, or what you want to see turned into dinosaurs, or just all the different kinds of ideas you might have. Leave them in the comments. Also, special thank you to Camille Creations, who actually designed the original version of Zeph from the Sci-5. She's the one that suggested the story setup for today's episode, and it was fun to work with. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note. And the thought I want to leave people with today is another quote from the great Jim Rohn, which is that we all must suffer one of two pains in life, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. The difference is that discipline weighs ounces, whereas regret weighs tons. Making yourself put in the work to doing something difficult that will bring good results in your life can be kinda hard, but in the long run, it's so much harder to not do those things. I hope that's inspiring to someone out there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next episode on Monday. Goodbye.